Hey friends, Marno Ducks here. Just a short video today, hopefully. I talked a little bit last time about um, the fact that not everybody has a 2600 to work with and that I had something in mind for you well this is it um, I've come up with a little bit of a rack in VCV rack which I think is pretty close to the 2600 and last week I did a, a patch um, that I shared with you and this is kind of a recreation of that patch so I just was using it to test uh, the base system that I built, and I think it worked out pretty well. Um, so if you're not familiar with VCV Rack, um, it's a wonderful modular environment full of free stuff if you're um, if you want to try things out and see how they work in a Euro Rack environment. Everything that I've done uh, has been with the free version of the software, and if you use a, a login account, you can download more free modules. So what I've done, if you're interested, is I've tried to create uh, a VCV rack version of a 2600 based on the Behringer that's sitting right next to this computer and uh, tried to mimic the functionality as closely as I can uh, based on what I know about how it works and what it does um, and just set it up in VCV rack using only free modules. Um, so if you are like I was very recently, apart from sale prices, uh, someone who couldn't uh, really do a 2600, and if you're interested in following along with the videos that I've got, um, I've created this for you, so hopefully you can use it. Um, this is a the same patch that I showed last week, just to show you that it does essentially the same stuff. Um, let me show you what I've got. Okay, let's do open. And I don't use VCV Rack a whole lot anymore. What I've done is I've created a base system for you. And I'm going to show you where you can get it uh, in just a minute. So basically, I've tried to, uh, with very few exceptions, uh, basically rebuild the 2600 as is. And I'm just going to show you what's in this. I'm going to let you explore it based on either the, the videos that I've made, um, I'm not gonna really do a, a whole tremendous amount of explanation. Um, I would recommend to you, if you haven't seen it, uh, Omri Cohen's channel, he, he's pretty much the best that I've seen as far as explaining what VCV Rack can do. Um, watching his videos is just wonderful anyway, so I'll link to him in the description. The difference, obviously, is that we need a module to get MIDI control into it. So I've added that uh, and I've got just a MIDI uh, keyboard controller coming in because I do use a MIDI controller uh, for the 2600. The 2600 is a three VCO synth. Um, the difference here is I wasn't gonna poke around looking for uh, limited VCOs. So I've just used all three VCOs that can also be uh, slow like LFOs like the 2600 can be. Um, we have <clears throat> frequency modulation and pulse width available just like on the 2600 and then we've got uh, waveforms, four waveforms out. We've got frequency and pulse width modulation uh, coming in and volt per octave. Uh, we've got Going into the filter on the 2600, we have a five channel mixer, so I've just muted these channels. There's no reason to limit yourself unless you're trying to really copy what a 2600 is doing. Uh, but I've got it muted down to five channels just so you know what's there. Um, and then the mix out would go into the filter. Um, what I've got down below, just so you know, the filter on the 2600 has five audio channels running into it, and it has three CV control channels running into it. So I've mimicked that here with the VCA mix, and so you can send different things uh, to control the, the filter cutoff, basically is what it's controlling in the mixer. 
you can send them into the VCA mixer and send that mix in here. So you'll notice I've not left the panel blank um, just because there are certain things that are hardwired in that if you're following my videos, I'm going to forget to mention. Um, so, and that's one of the things. So you may just want to leave that there all the time if you're trying to follow the patches that I make. Um, there's three lines of VCA modulation that are always hardwired to the, to the filter cutoff. And you can, you can specify how much they modulate it. You can have three running simultaneously, and you can specify how much they modulate it just by the sliders. I pulled the fourth one all the way down just because there isn't four, but again, no reason to limit yourself that way. All right, and then in the uh, 2600, there's two envelopes. There's an attack release envelope, which I have right here, and then there's an uh, ADSR envelope, which I have over here. Um, and then depending on what you're doing, like I, I set this up, actually I kind of left this in by accident, but the ADSR um, can control the filter. It can control the amp. So this is the amp at the end, which lets the sound out. Um, for example, your attack decay releases is, is in here and it feeds into the amp that lets the sound out. And then finally, the mix from the VCA leads into the spring reverb and then out into the world. And all this side is kind of hardwired. The rest of this stuff I've left for you to figure out how do you want to use it? Do you want to use it? Um, this stuff gets a little tangly, so I've left cables in there for you. I don't make a whole lot of use of the envelope follower yet, so I may change my mind about this later. Um, I did, as I was messing with things, swap this out and found things that seemed to be more authentic. So if you're playing with patches that I make in VCV Rack and you find that they don't work, please uh, bring that up so we can explore it together. That would be fun. I would love to learn from you and maybe refine this as we go. Um, so anyway, this is uh, saved as uh, ARP 2600 base system. Um, and I've downloaded all these are free um, free modules that you can get. Uh, if you don't have VCV Rack, you'll need to get VCV Rack. So head, o head over to vcvrack.com. You can create an account, download the software. And if you have an account, you can find uh, free modules, just loads, hundreds, scads of these things. Everything that I've used in my build is free, so there's no need for you to worry about paying for anything that is in that. Um, so please help yourself. And um, the other thing that I've done, I'll provide this in the link, is I've created on Patch Storage a link to this build. So you can find my ARP 2600 base system. You can download this patch. With all this stuff pre-built, you don't have to worry about building it yourself. Um, and then you can just follow along. A um, couple of other things I want to mention. I know it's been a lot of talk this time, uh, but I just wanted to give you some tools. So what I hope is that if you don't have a 2600 and you're interested in this kind of stuff and you're working towards getting one of those Behringer things, which I do recommend, um, think about following Starsky Carr. He's got wonderful uh, 2600 tutorials. Also, Ralph Baum Baumgartel, sorry about that pronunciation. He's got wonderful 2600 tutorials as well. And then T-Noise, also wonderful 2600 tutorials. I follow all of them myself, and I will link to them in the description. Hopefully, this system will allow you to follow along with what they're doing um, and test out what they're doing. And again, if it doesn't, I would love to know about that. Um, just because I'm such a 2600 fanboy, and I would love to uh, be able to provide tools to help other people become fanboys too. So I'm hoping that following those channels, following the tutorials and the playlist um, that I'm starting to build up um, will be a lot of fun for you. I would love to know how to make this tool better. Um, so if you do find things as you go along that it doesn't do that it should, uh, please do let me know about it in the comments. 
and uh, let's see if we can make this thing better. Um, happy patching. Hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.